Hello, everybody. It's Adamo with CopLock.org. Luck and Rose's article, When Should You Shoot a Cop, has made waves yet again, this time in Arizona, with the Counterterrorism Information Center. Earlier today, I gave them a call and ended up talking with two individuals. One officer hung up on me, and the other had a lengthy conversation. The following video is those conversations in their entirety. Uh, excuse me, who was I speaking with? This is Media Relations, DPS. Uh, yes, I just want to let you know that I'm audio and video recording uh, this phone call, but I was looking to speak with somebody in Media Relations about a press release the Arizona Counter Terrorism Information Center uh, posted last week. Okay. Uh, we're a part of them, but they post their own thing. This comes out in the U.S. Border Patrol. Okay, well, I was given this number from, there's a number on the flyer. I called that number on the press release, excuse me, then I called that number and then a gentleman there gave me this phone number. What press release were you referring to? Um, it is a officer safety document found at Occupy event. When should you shoot a cop? Oh, 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 oh that was, that's not PAC. That's ACTIC. That's oh. the minister. Yeah. Oh, that is you? Yes. Okay, would you be able to make a few comments? I have a few questions about that. Sure. Um, did you read the article? Yes. Uh, what were your thoughts? Okay, um, but you read the article, and in there it states, um, I'd like to read a piece of it to you if I could. Um, Are you the media? I am. Okay, let me have what is this. Oh, okay, well let me get to my question and then I'll answer yours as well. <laughs> but it says, if you have a right to do A, and it means that someone has th then tries to stop you from doing A, even if he has a badge or a politician scribble, i.e. the law, on his side, you have the right to use whatever amount of force is necessary to resist that person. Is that correct to you? I'm not, I'm not, gonna, uh, I'm not going to debate the merits of what is in the flyer. Uh, we are conducting a criminal investigation, but I never comment about that. What, 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 what could be criminal? What could be. Oh, okay. But, sir. Hello? He hung up on me. I got to call him back. He hung up on me. It's not very nice, man. Hang up on somebody. DPS Media Relations, this is Kerry. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, but you must have hung up on me, and I, I wanted to finish my conversation. I have. Uh, it's the first time picking up the phone today. Oh, oh I'm sorry, then. Um, are you uh, aware? I was talking with an individual before who had just hung up on me, but um, I'm looking for a comment about... Uh, a document that was released by the Arizona Counterterrorism Information Center. Uh -huh. um, Occupy Phoenix, whatever, how to shoot a cop thing. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you had read the flyer itself. No, I haven't. Okay. And before I get any further, I'd like to uh, state that I'm video and audio recording this and that I do have other questions. I'm with a website called copblock.org. My name's Adamo Freeman. Copblock.org? Yep. Yeah, actually, uh, I've already been made aware of the article that's in your website as well, the third-party article. Sure. Um, as far as that goes, any official comments, we're not going to make an official comment on it in the sense that we've made uh, the media aware of it, and uh, we've made law enforcement aware of it. Do you feel that... You uh, adequately and accurately made them aware of it. Do you think you portrayed what was in the article fairly? Um, I don't. I don't think we get into detail on it. Our counterterrorism unit provided the, the bulletin on it, but we uh, we notified law enforcement that that was out there and make them aware. What do you mean by that? Like the, the that flyer itself. And why would why would the flyer words on paper uh, need to be warned of other uh, of officers? Uh, because it creates this officer safety issue. Because we need to be aware of what's really going on with people's perception on how to harm law enforcement. Um, 
Do you, do you think that's what the article is centered around, how to harm law, harm law enforcement? Do you think that the title is not? Uh, no, I, I think I it think says... The title's pretty obvious. Sure. Do you believe that people have unalienable rights? Have what? Unalienable un rights. Like, an unalienable right is, like, I have the right to free speech, and nobody can take that away from me. That is correct. So, uh, in the article, Larkin Rose, the author of such article, states that if an individual has an unalienable right, then would that also mean that you have the unalienable right to defend some yourself from somebody who is taking that right? Uh, that, yeah, you have a legal right, too. Okay, so, although sometimes you don't. I mean, people are often charged by... If you resist an arrest that is unlawful, you still aren't allowed to resist that arrest, though you should be able to. That, that's, the legal system is in charge of that. Okay. That's why we have legal authority from the courts. So is it really threatening of an officer? or I mean, I don't feel the article was uh, advocating the cold-blooded murder of, of officers, yet saying that if I have an unalienable right to freedom of speech, and if some folks are arrested for that, then at what point do they have the right to defend themselves from that arrest? No, but I don't, they weren't trying to take That's them for saying, freedom of speech. Well, I, I believe basic, basic right. no, but yes, freedom of speech. But also, there's that's like a, an excessive force case. You know, if now if you were saying that if someone said a racial slur and then men in riot gear with tear gas and rubber bullets came and shot that person and dragged them off, would that person be justified in defending themselves with lethal force? I understand that, and that's where a problem often occurs. Does a state statute or city ordinance ever supersede the Constitution of the United States? No, it's there to support it. Okay, so if, what, what if there's a situation like you see in the Occupy events where individuals are um, camping in parks, but there's a curfew, yet they're peacefully assembled and protesting their government, uh, yet it conflicts with a curfew? You know, what, what do you do then? Which law does the right to protest, the First Amendment... Uh, supersede the curfew. Okay. That's my question to you. Okay, well, just like everything else, people have a right to, let's just say, curfew. Curfew is based off of other state statutes where you can't make uh, undo a reasonable noise to hinder business or, or residential property. Now, your freedom of speech does not supersede anybody else's freedom to do business or right to have privacy or right to uh, live in a residential area or business area that would, uh, if it ended on them, then you're violating somebody's right because you have the right to, and that, that's, not, that's not justifiable. So you're saying that the freedom of speech is restricted if it is violating someone else's right? So like walk through a park? the freedom of speech, you can go up and tell somebody that they are a racial slur. Do you think that that's okay and shouldn't be, that make them held accountable? I think they should be held accountable. I think there are way more peaceful ways to hold them accountable or, I don't know, it hasn't happened to me. I guess I can't speak on that example. But okay, I, so I'm just saying that... Have you, have you been arrested at the Occupy Phoenix things yet? No. Of Occupy Phoenix? If they're given a lawful order and if they're uh, violating a state statute, that peace officer has the legal right to take them into custody with as much reasonable force as necessary. Well, this could be a further conversation. I don't know how you trespass on public property. I mean, if you're forced to pay for it. You have to have a permit for those things. Okay. Well, I understand what... to 
make an arrest on it, they have the legal authority to make any arrest with as much reasonable force as necessary to take them into custody. That's a custody issue. It's not a freedom of speech issue. Okay, but it is starts with the freedom of speech. The people are in the park for freedom of speech. Again, I think we're getting a little off course because we're in our, we're using examples of racism, which isn't what I'm talking about, and that's also a very sensitive subject. Um, but of course it is. But to, I'm, I'm arguing your I'm counter arguing your argument because you're you're very narrow in your argument, and you need to make it a very broad statement. No, because it's the freedom of speech. You can argue that the government is not doing anything. You can argue that all day, but the same argument can be made. For racial stuff as well. So it has Sir, to be a very general sense. That I wasn't. So if you can't argue or defend everything, then that, that doesn't make sense. First of all, I'm, I'm calling a comment about a specific article that was left at the Occupy. In that article, he mentioned, Larkin Rose mentioned the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. So that's why I chose those things. I'm not try, This isn't a personal debate with me. I'm mere, merely trying to understand your release and your view of the article because I. This was not a, an actual release. That was a leaked counterterrorism information center news bulletin. So it wasn't an official statement by any department or anybody. Well, it says unclassified for official use only. Exactly, official use only. Okay. Basically, that's put out to, to make people aware that this flyer is out. Okay. Well, in there, in that flyer that shouldn't have been sent out but was, it says this is blatantly anti-government. What is anti-government about saying if I have a right, I have a right to defend a right? Isn't that actually what the government is, you know, its purpose is to work for the people? A cop, a cop, is, a cop is employed by a government, okay? Okay. And they are a government's representative. And for you to go out and justify shooting a government employee is a direct comment on, or a direct correlation between government employees and the threat to them. So if you don't believe in government and you think that you can just shoot a police officer because they're violating your right, that's anti-government. Okay. I think the article, though, relates that if if, a, if I met, was met with a mugger on the street in torn up jeans and a, a, a trench coat and he tried to rob me and I was able to protect myself and unfortunately had to use lethal force against him, would I be – is that criminal? Is that wrong? If they're robbing you? Yes. No, you have the right to defend yourself for that. Okay. Now, the article is stating that what if an officer is violating your unalienable rights? What if it is a police officer that is mugging me or or doing something else? You know. So the police officer is basically trying to steal your money for no reason. Or let's just say he's – I have a right to freedom of speech. Let's say he says you can't carry this sign on that sidewalk and I will take you to jail. And if you don't go, I will – discard this tear gas and I will shoot these rubber bullets or, you know, draw down on you with a real firearm. What do I get to do? Well, if they have lawful authority over you and you point that gun at an officer, they have every right to defend themselves. You're, you're, you're taking it to an extreme here. But I'm saying is if I'm allowed to defend myself from a person without a costume and a badge, then why aren't I allowed to defend myself against one with one? Okay, if, if you're going to demean what a police officer does because... They're the ones that you call when you need help. Then this interview is going to be over. If you call it a costume, it's not a costume; it's a uniform. Okay, so and obviously you don't like law enforcement. That's very evident. Okay, but in the bottom line is, if you're robbed, your house got robbed, and you needed help, who would you call? I probably would not call the police because, unfortunately, the system of policing is set up right now that you guys are probably going to be further away. If there was an individual in my house, I'm going to try to protect myself and my property. Okay. That would be my first instinct. Okay. But eventually, who would you call? Well, I, I guess it would depend on the circumstance. Today, if I don't call the cops, it's probably a crime, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you don't have to call the police. So if there was an intruder in my house... You need, to, you need to notify somebody that you, call, you shot somebody. Right, that's what I'm saying. So we don't know how the circumstance ends. If I was able to scare them off and they just left, I probably wouldn't call the police. If I had to use lethal force, I wouldn't like that I had to call the police, but I would have to because otherwise it would be a crime. Exactly. Even though then I would be suspect. But anyways, again, we're getting off topic. I'm and for the record, I understand. You're the one taking this interview way off to the left. I understand. What. I also am not against police officers, and I am not anti-cop. I feel the institution yeah, is wrong. I mean, you're supporting this whole argument. You're, you're, you're justifying it. 
justifying shooting a police officer because you have the right to freedom of speech, but when it infringes on somebody else's right or a law, you, you can't do that. Well, and then your and your argument is that it's okay to shoot a police officer. Then I have never argued that. I'm only asking questions. I'm saying that if I have a right to defend myself from an individual, then I have the right to defend myself from an individual who wears a uniform and is acting under the color of law. I'm about broadening the principle. If it's right for the individual to do, then it's it's right for you to do to a government agent. A police, a police officer is making that. I, I, you know, in your terms, you think they're violating your First Amendment, but what they're doing is affecting an arrest based off of the state statute. If they're doing that, they're doing that under the authority of the United States Constitution and Arizona Constitution. They have the right to do that. That is different than somebody that's mugging you or a private citizen that is just doing it to do it. You're right. And There's I'm not saying... Behind it. That's I... why we're called duly authorized police officers state of Arizona and justified by the Arizona Constitution and the U.S. Constitution. There's a difference. I understand that, but I'm saying that if... If you I, grow up and tell a police officer, I'm going to shoot you in the face because you have the freedom of speech, that does not make that comment correct. It does not make it justified. So you cannot go up if to you, a police officer and say that? If you make that threat and you, you have the means to do it, you have the capability to do it, and the officer perceives it as a threat, he has a right to defend himself. Anybody has a right to defend themselves if you make that comment. So what if an officer tells me, come out of the house or I'll blow the door off? Do I have a right to defend you myself? violated a law and they have lawful authority to do that and he has a search warrant? Absolutely, you have to come out. But what if it's a law that says that I can't put something in my body, like it's a drug law? You know, Does, does anybody have the right to tell me what I can or cannot put in my body? Nobody has the right to do it, but we can make laws to say it's illegal. But that's not correct, right? Are, are there ever are there any bad laws? Are there any bad laws? Yeah, are there any bad laws that you know of? A law that you yourself probably wouldn't abide by. <sighs> um, no, but punishment wise, I think there are some some laws that are not justified. But no, no laws laws are there to protect the, the, the greater citizens of Arizona and the U.S. and the entire United States. I hear you, but not everybody would agree to that. Not everyone would agree. I, I don't yeah, think the war on drugs is a is a very effective. I think it puts you guys in dangerous situations. And, uh, absolutely not. I'd rather. That's why you become a police officer because you know there's an inherent danger in something. And if me arresting somebody that's impaired by drugs or alcohol saves a family down the road, I'm willing to put myself in that danger. That's why I do this. But what if it doesn't save a family? What if it hurts the family you took the guy from? That person should have been involved in drugs. But you also said a person has the right to decide what they put in their body. Exactly. If they want to violate the statutes, then they can. They, right. There's repercussions for it. Everybody's well aware of what the punish, punishments are for those. So would you uh, say if – would you arrest people if they made ketchup illegal? If they made ketchup illegal, I have a, I have a responsibility to enforce the laws. But don't you have uh, – I, I don't pick and choose what laws I enforce. If the state legislature makes it illegal, I have to enforce it. That's the way it is. But don't you have the ability to use discretion? Well, when it comes to certain circumstances like tickets or warnings, yeah. If somebody's violating a law in front of me and I ignore it, then I can lose my job and I can go to jail for it. And I'm not going to jail for somebody else's decisions. See, and that's my problem with policing. Again, I talked earlier about how I'm not a cop hater, but it's the actual institution that I dislike because you and I... Well, if you right, like it, then why don't you go somewhere else that has a different institution? Well, I wish it was that easy, but it's not. And why should why I have it's to? Not easy. You can just move. Well, why, why should I have to move from my family, friends, and loved ones because some arbitrary group of people? Take them with you. What? Take them with you. <laughs> but I'm saying, wouldn't it just be better to? Yeah, that's the, you don't have an argument. I mean, just, if you don't like it here, go to like, let's say the United Kingdom. But go to Britain. why can't I ask you that? If why can't you and your your uh, colleagues who offer the service of protection? have customers that voluntarily pay you like most other services like Starbucks, McDonald's, or your sh shopping center. You, you How yourself... You accepting money from customers when we get paid by the state or local governments? Because it would be direct then, and like right now you get paid to the state and they got to take a little bit of cut by the time the money filters down, you've probably lost some. Plus, whatever, I'm sure there's aspects of your job you might not like, whether it's a lot of paperwork or the long hours or... Doing these these small time ticket victimless I, I crime offenses. Right now. My job, although a lot of the parts I don't like, I've actually, believe it or not, actually done good out there, and I've actually saved somebody's life. So 
I think that's all worth the mundane details of doing reports and and the dangerous activities. I've actually done it. So you can say that you know I've I've hindered somebody's life because they decided to use drugs and I arrested them. But the one person that was burning up in his car that I pulled out of, he has a family to go home to now. So with all the bad that you think there is, there's plenty of good out there. Well, I, I do understand that well, but I'm, I still think that you could do good if you just offered a service. If you took the, hey, here's 10 things I want to do. I'll protect people's homes. I maybe can chase down stolen cars or I don't know which parts of your job you like the most, but you could do those things. You can go door to door. And if you came to my house and said, hey, if, you, if anything's ever broken into it, you can call me. That includes your car, your garage. Uh, if you because want, I can. It's a private security sector. Yeah. And that's not, what, that's not what it should be. I think it should be because then if you started arresting peaceful marijuana users that I didn't want you to do or that if you beat up some of my friends who were peacefully protesting on public property, I could just stop paying you and actually hold you accountable. And then you would offer a good or service based for on the market. Instead, the government you, you can is your boss. You can choose to move to another state. You can choose to move to another country. Uh, you, can, you can choose to do a lot of things. You have the freedom of choice, which I think you, you believe in. So why don't, if you're so upset with the government system here, why don't you leave? Well, I just think it would be easier. Why should I leave this problem to the it's generations below easier. me? You just move and then you're done. What this whole pro process has done is trying to uproot an entire country and the way the system works, which is a lot more difficult than just merely moving. Why don't you just move? Because I don't think I should have to move, and I think there are problems. I think it would be it'd be it's right. It's easier to change the entire government. Well, I don't think it's really hard to change. It's just allow people to either voluntarily pay the government for the service it wants to provide or allow me to opt out if I don't want to use its services. Just like one thing, the city of Phoenix water system, I don't like the way they work. I pay the taxes, I pay the bill for that. I don't like the way the city of Phoenix does that. You know what I'll do? I'll move to another city. Because there's nothing I can change for it. There's no reason to change it for one person or two people or a few minority of it. So what I would do is I would move. Not that hard. I just moved last weekend. Well, I understand that. I didn't that. like where I was living. I felt, I felt like my family was in danger, so I decided to move. It's really not that hard. I understand that, but I'm saying you are fine with that, but maybe I'm not. We're two different people. We can have different solutions. We shouldn't be forced into the same one so your way. your solution is to shoot a police officer. No, I never said that. Is to move. No. What one seems more reasonable? No. I understand that. No matter where I move, I'm still under the – the police are all the same. I've traveled the country. They all will say the same stuff to me. You know, I'm you just know, doing my job. The state is Washington. What's Washington that? Washington has a really good uh, uh, democratic system where you actually have a lot more rights up there than you would anywhere else. Well, actually, I live in New Hampshire, which is one of the best as well. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty liberal. Right. But I, I understand that, and I have taken those courses. But I'm saying all, I de overall – to me, it's simpler to allow people like we do now. You don't, you're not forced to go to McDonald's. You're not forced to go to Starbucks. You can go to any other one, and I should have that freedom. If I have it in fast food, grocery stores, and coffee chains, I should also have it in. Well, I should have it in protection. We don't have any privately owned protection services. You have a security company you can get. Yeah, but they're heavily regulated by the state. I'm talking about truly free market. I didn't deny that. Huh? I did not deny that. I just don't okay, think it should be so monopolized by the government. Be around, why do you get to pick and choose who comes to your house then? What do you mean? But you're saying I should be able to pay that person to do that, which sounds like a bribe anyways. And I, I should be able to pick and choose. If I don't like it, I'm not going to pay you. Well, then live in the county. Live in the county island. Well, I mean... There, and it's an elected position. You can choose to... Yeah, but if the sheriff starts doing things I don't like, I can't stop paying him. That's the key. Then, then move. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. The, I know. The mm -hmm. idea that law enforcement is inadequate and that we infringe your rights is very untrue. You can ask a lot of people out there that have been victims of crimes and police officers solve them, or they hold the people accountable that stole their car, or they arrest the rapists that just raped their sister, mother, or daughter. You can ask them what really happens with that stuff, and it's actually very good stories. The idea that you're willing to take somebody else's life because your freedom of speech or what sign you can carry, that, that makes no sense to me, because now you're ruining, you're killing somebody.
because you want to hold a sign up in a public area. Sir, that's, first that's of all, I, I, I want to make it clear that I never said me personally would justify killing a cop for infringing my freedom of speech. And the example in the article that I'm calling about implies that if an officer just comes and says, you're under arrest, come with me for accessorizing your freedom of speech, that's, he wasn't advocating to pull a gun out and shoot them. But if they would bring a large amount of force like they recently did in the Oakland um, Occupy protest, they were firing tear gas, chemical weapons, and rubber bullets at people. Do you know the complete circumstances of that situation? Because I don't. I know there was a legend. Maybe there was violence threatened. Maybe somebody got hurt. Maybe they didn't have the permit to continue to be there. And so legally they weren't able to be there. And so what those law officers were probably doing is upholding the laws that they are required to do under that constitution and that state. You don't know all the laws. No officer knows all the laws. So no individual knows all the laws. And whether or not it was clearly... Stated to them if they were in violation of this. Here's how protests work. You get a, either you do it on public property and you have a permit to do it, or you get permission from a private residence to do that on their on their property. Do you think if you're doing it on a public record, public do you, area, and you have a permit, that permit is very specific. If you violate that permit or go beyond what the, the circumstances are, you will most likely be violating a law. Now, if you're violating a law, a peace officer has the right and authority to hold you accountable by taking you into custody. He can use whatever means necessary, and if it's a large group of people, you you, you bet your butt that nobody's going to walk in there by themselves and arrest one or two people. You have to use a large force, and if they refuse to go, then it turns into, if you have, I think it's three or more people, or two or more people uh, that are refusing to go, and it gets them to the point where a, a potential riot can happen. And the last thing we want to have happen is anybody get hurt or any damage to any property. And so they have to use those circumstances. If they don't, it gets out of control, especially in Oakland. So the police are authorized due to law to use force first and foremost to stop force being used against them. Say that again, sorry. The police are allowed and justified because of law to use first force first and foremost to stop other people from using it against them. and they're citizens, so they have the right to defend themselves against physical violence. If any individual in does, and they resist that arrest by putting that officer in danger, or physically putting them in danger, they have a right to use whatever force necessary to make that arrest and protect themselves. Uh, all just right. Like, just, like, just like you. The, okay, here's the, here's, here's the difference. A police officer is doing their job. They have the lawful authority and their responsibility given to them by the government to uphold the laws, not personal views, the laws, which are which are put together by the legislature and, and for the, the ultimately the greater good of society and not the, the few restricted minds that are out there. If they are upholding that law, doing the job in the responsible way that they should be doing, then they have to use force if that person is not willing to go peacefully. And if there's if there's violence, obviously we're going to have to use the force that meets or exceeds whatever force is being used against them. It's really simple. These are not personal personal choices made by police officers. If somebody is using force or not cooperating, we have to do what we have to do to make sure that that person is taken into custody if they're violating the law. Okay, so what can anybody do if they feel they're being wrongfully arrested? What should they do? arrested yep if they feel it's wrong or unlawful and i'm being arrested and this officer is threatening force and i if i don't want to use it back if i don't have the right to use it back on an officer but if it was anybody else i could what should i do when it's an officer uh submit and then file a civil lawsuit for in, in, infringing on your civil rights like everybody else you make it sound like it's very easy but it, it's not um, it, it actually is pretty easy because i've had to deal with it Okay. It's not. It's not that hard. You make it sound so hard. What's the harm in just peacefully going and then filing a civil suit, which actually is way worse than using any violence? I'd rather get punched in the face than have to go through the civil process of a civil suit involving uh, the United States Constitution. Okay, I'm not saying uh, it's it's unreasonable to think that violence is the solution when 
a simple act is way more justified. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. If people are just in a park for the police officers, why... understand the circumstances of the protest. Hey, the protest organizer says we can only be from here from this time to this time, and if you're outside of that, that's when the permit expires. Okay? So be there from that time to that time, and now you know that if you're there outside of that, you're not allowed to be there. You're violating a law and can be arrested. So it's the land of the free as long as you do what we say. You have everybody... Have you ever seen the white supremacists do a march or anything like that? No. They have permits for that. Everybody has permits that they're doing. If they're not doing permits, which nobody's going to restrict you based off of what you have to say, what you look like, age, gender, race, or religion, they're not going to restrict you on it. They just want you to have the permit to be there. So you can do it. Do you think uh, the Founding Fathers and, and people during the first American Revolution had a permit? No, there was a government. He was the king of, uh, of England. That's not a government. That's a... That's a... It's a government. The empire. I mean... It's a monarchy. It's so different. You're, you're talking 200-something years ago, and you're talking about current day, which are so different. The government was established after that. That's the government that we still use to this day. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to tell you, but that's the same system we've been using for this entire time, so your argument that the Revolutionary War is is justifiable in what we're doing now, that revolution created the government that you're upset with. No. I'm sorry to tell you, man. Well, I know, the but is, is they also created a thing... The government was set forth back then that you believe was right, and that's the same government that we have to this day. Right. They also said things like, you have the right to freedom, to peacefully assemble and protest. They said they had the right to gather information on public officials. They said you had the right to be uh, reasonably secure from I- illegal search and seizures of your home and property and persons, and yet we have the Patriot Act. I, I in Arizona, like you guys I, have I'm checkpoints. Sure I've had to research all that stuff and do all that stuff. I know. So. In, in Arizona, you guys have checkpoints that don't cr- on roads that don't cross borders. You know, this isn't the same. This isn't the same government. It's just like driving. Driving is not a right. It's not in the Constitution. It's a privilege. We can take that away. Wow. We have, we, have the, we have the reasonability to put traffic control anywhere we want. Who's we? Any government. Who's the government? Who is the government? You are the government. You vote for your senators, legislatures, and president. Well, I don't, but... So you don't vote and you're over here arguing about the government? Absolutely, because I can think for oh my myself. Gosh, what are, I'm sorry, but if you don't vote, then you have no say in the government. Well, so why don't you start voting? And then that way, you can actually have a say in the government. Well, because at one point in my life, and or actually, actually still today, I believe that I own my body, and other people think that they do, that I don't own my body, and therefore I've become a victim of the war on drugs. So I'm no longer allowed to vote or protect myself in case you guys aren't around, i.e. o oh, fire. Yeah, That's correct. Okay, that makes sense. That's why you don't vote. Okay. So... Even if I want it. But voting doesn't fix like, anything. You don't like it. I mean, honestly... But, this is the government that was set forth hundreds of years ago. Nothing has changed. They've added some amendments to it. But the way this government has been run to this day is still the same way. I police pl- departments have been around. The Boston Police Department was the first formalized police agency in the world that's been there since the government was started. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, man. Well, that's I hear you. Changed. Well, I guess... What I would like to point out about the government is that it is your employer, it's your boss, and what do you feel about it being trillions of dollars in debt? Would you still do the things that you are so proudly doing today if that check wasn't coming any longer? Here's my viewpoint on the government. I served in the United States Army. I've done what I've done for my country, and they've supported me. I think that if this government wasn't around, that this country would be a lot worse. So... I believe in the government, and we're trillions of dollars in debt. You know what? We are. There's nothing we can do about it. And we've gotten more of the debt in the last four or five years than, than what we should have been. But the bottom line is that I've served my country in more than one aspect. I believe in this government because they're actually out there to make sure that you're, you're doing the right thing, which is not hurting your body or anybody else's. I think that the freedom of speech that we have is great. As long as you're not infringing on anybody else's right, I think that the government of this country, in the sense that we can go out there and have a voice 
and go out and talk to our representatives and vote for them if they believe that they are a good representation of themselves, then where else are you going to have that much freedom? If you don't like the way that the government does law enforcement, then move to a country that has a different law enforcement. Canada, they have a great law enforcement up there. Mexico, there you go. They pay their own police officers. They can find them there all the time. I'd rather not run from the issues and combat the problems and hope people follow what I call their logical conclusion is that the initiation of force is wrong and that the voluntary free society of voluntary exchanges uh, would be better off for all of, all people, not just the selected few that are in politics or the ruling class. But I appreciate your time today, sir. I forgot your name, but... Uh, just officer. Officer? Yep. You don't want to tell me your name? No, no, no. Okay. Well, other than uh, coplock.org, I hope you look at uh, oathkeepers.com sometime. Maybe check out those folks. Oathkeepers, O-A-T-H, keepers.com. It's a really good, yeah, oathkeepers is a really good website. And as well as maybe uh, LEAP, which is Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Okay. And though we, though we disagree, I know, though we may disagree on some things, I appreciate the civil conversation and Again, that reinforces my point, though, is that though we disagree, we're forced into the same system. And if we both had the option to opt out and do things that we both think our time, money, and energy is, is valuable towards, then we would all we both would be better off, even though we disagree. I, I, I completely agree with you. If I didn't like this country, I'd move somewhere else. I've been saying that from the very beginning. Right. Well, take care, sir. And, uh, all right, you too. Good luck. Appreciate your time.